that the more better. From scandalous affairs to shocking betrayals, these stories will leave you on the edge of your seat and questioning everything you thought you knew about fame and fortune. You asked for it, and we're delivering. Today, we're diving into the dark side of Hollywood once again. Let's count down 20 more of the most evil actors in Hollywood history. Buckle up and get ready to explore the darker corners of Tinseltown. Please don't play governess, Karen. I haven't your unyielding good taste. Number 20. Elizabeth Taylor Elizabeth Taylor's life was as dramatic off-screen as it was on-screen, and her tumultuous relationships often made headlines. While she's celebrated as one of the greatest actresses, her personal life was riddled with controversy. Taylor's eight marriages, numerous affairs, and love for indulgence, including alcohol, kept her in the spotlight for all the wrong reasons. Her engagement to Richard Burton, for example, was rumored to be an act of spite after their turbulent relationship led to multiple marriages and divorces. Working on Noel Coward's private lives, Elizabeth and Rich brought out the worst in each other. They arrived separately, inebriated. They acted out of character. They skipped performances. When Taylor missed a show, Richard became irritated, traveled to Las Vegas, and married Sally Hay. Elizabeth was so outraged when she received the news that she announced her engagement to Victor Luna, outdoing him. She didn't dislike her ex-husband. Later in life, Elizabeth stated that if Richard had not died, they would have married for the third time. Do you even know how the two actors got together? Well, here comes the sad part. After meeting on the set of Cleopatra, Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton went on one of the most memorable, if tempestuous, love tales in history. The performers, who were both married at the time, divorced and remarried a year later on March 15, 1964. If you don't consider that evil, then what is? We surely wouldn't wish that on anybody else. Number 19. Gene Kelly Seeing Gene Kelly on television would bring a smile to your face, right? That's not the case for most people. It's like when dancer Sid Charisse returned home from the MGM lot covered in bruises. Her husband assumed she had worked with Gene Kelly that day. However, Gene may have done far worse than be too rough with his co-stars. He reportedly made a donation to the Provisional Irish Republican Army in 1970. Apparently, during an underground fundraising tour in the United States, he met with IRA leader Cathal Goulding and presented him with a £20,000 check. He reportedly informed Goulding, The money is for weaponry. I definitely don't want it to go to any do-gooders. Gene Kelly soared to popularity with commercial songs such as On the Town and Singing in the Rain but it was always difficult to form professional relationships off-screen, owing to his less publicized, volatile temper. Though Gene was seen as a modern Hollywood darling in public, he was an egotistical nuisance behind the scenes, with a dictatorial attitude toward his staff and a love for younger women. Imagine how hard it must have been for his co-stars. How come we never saw anyone complain? Reports of such behavior persisted throughout Gene Kelly's career, with Stanley Donan, who worked with the star for many years as a choreographer and co-director, subsequently stating that the actor was difficult to work with. When asked about Gene in an interview with the New York Times, Stanley stated, What I didn't like, and I know this is not suitable now, was his off-screen demeanor. He might be unpleasant to me and everyone else. In some parts of the world, people close to him are still defending his actions. Patricia Ward Kelly, Gene Kelly's widow, dismisses the charges that surfaced following his death. She stated her late husband was proud of his Irish heritage, but he didn't have much money and was not a violent person. Number 18. James Dean Do you ever wonder how famous people act when you meet them in person? Die-hard fans would also imagine that when they think of James Dean. Sadly, though, the dreamy actor had a lot of secrets he was trying to bury deep in the pits of Hollywood. James appeared in only three movies, yet his sulking, bad boy image was forever immortalized the day his sleek silver Porsche collided with another car at a crossroads. He appeared in only two Broadway shows, See the Jaguar 1952 and The Immortalist 1954. Robert Ullman, the publicity representative for the latter piece, recalls James Dean was the most uncooperative, moodiest, and offensive actor I have ever worked with. In Rebel, The Life and Legend of James Dean by Donald Spoto, he was extremely nasty, foul-mouthed, unprofessional, and despised by many of his co-stars. 
Many performers who have worked with him despised him and regretted the experience. One actor who worked with Dean on television remembered Jimmy as vulgar, self-congratulatory, and nasty decades later. His movements on stage were far removed from the carefully rehearsed planned positions the actor Vaughn Taylor remembered. This caused havoc with the other actors' performances and for the director. The result was pandemonium for everyone except Mr. Dean and his sick ego. Maybe he really was Hollywood's bad boy. Number 17. Errol Flynn Errol Flynn was, without a doubt, a man's man. The actor apparently enjoyed spending time with his male pals doing male things, as they were known in that age. Boating and drinking were two of his favorite activities throughout his adult life. Errol's other friends were similarly wild and fun-loving, and he included many accounts about their antics in his memoir. In terms of his acting reputation, he was fully aware of his talents and weaknesses. He played amazing roles for heroes and gun-toting cowboys like the best of them, but he was no great dramatist and reputedly grew quite embarrassed when a member of the film crew praised him on his talents. Even when he was forced by the studio to play a more nuanced character, such as in The Private Lives of Elizabeth and Essex, opposite Betty Davis, he appeared to capture the hearts of moviegoers. His life really was chaotic, though. He had three marriages with many, many paramours. He had charges of statutory rape and was acquitted. Plus, he had too many problems financially because ex-wives drained his bank account. He was a heavy drinker, big spender, and global traveler who drained his own bank account. Still, he was well-liked by his peers and never lacked male and female companionship. Charles Higgum's 1980 memoir, Errol Flynn, The Untold Story, contained shocking revelations concerning the actor. In addition to suggesting Flynn had many affairs, he accused him of Nazi sympathies. His statements were founded solely on circumstantial evidence and were later disproved in biographies. In 1942, three trials inspired the well-known phrase, in like Flynn. He was pardoned each time, but the harm to his reputation had already occurred. His lifestyle choices obviously had an impact on his physical appearance, and he spent the majority of his career playing aged alcoholics. When Flynn died of a heart attack in 1959 at the age of 50, the medical examiner determined he had the body of an 85-year-old man. Number 16. Gary Cooper Let's include Gary Cooper on the list of actors who had a dark side. Gary was Hollywood's beloved good guy, but only a few are aware of his problematic personality. Behind his enticing eye, this cowboy battled to control his playboy tendencies constantly succumbing to his forbidden urges. The actor faces heavy competition for the title of biggest womanizer in Hollywood history, but the fact that Gary is reported to have been with all of his co-stars, including Clara Bow and Lupe Velez, puts him in the running. He famously began an affair with Marlene Dietrich while dating Velez, sparking a bitter animosity between the two actresses. Lupe insisted on remaining on set with Gary and Marlene at all times, even attempting to shoot him after her suspicions were proven. Cooper continued to bet his co-stars, including Tallulah Bankhead, who famously declared, The only reason I went to Hollywood was to ruin that divine Gary Cooper. While many of the women on this list were chewed up and spit out by the tabloids or studios, the press portrayed Gary as a reformed, admired member of society, despite the fact that he still had affairs. Perhaps his scummiest moment occurred when, at 47, he had an affair with his 21-year-old co-star Patricia Neal and demanded she have an abortion. It probably didn't harm his reputation, but it affected the actress. Number 15. Betty Davis Betty Davis was amazing on screen. She was one of the screen goddesses, although they say if you got on her wrong side, you'll see the worst from the actress. It's probably because her mood could change quickly. In Vanity Fair, producer William Fry described meetings with the star that started well but ended in the societal equivalent of Armageddon. Betty and William were having a meal with director Herschel Dotry when he made the mistake of waving his finger in Betty's face. According to Fry, Davis went off on the director and cleared out half the restaurant. She immediately resumed her normal behavior as if nothing had happened. So now we know her fury was legendary but her obsession with detail was almost as well known. There's one time when she experienced casting a dog for her film, A Stolen Life. Rather than relying on a pet casting director, 
Davis personally auditioned every mutt in Los Angeles. The dog played a little role, appearing in only one critical scene. According to the director, her attempts were ultimately futile. The dog was too terrified of her to do any canine acting. Finally, who wouldn't forget her feud with Joan Crawford? Betty Davis once spent an entire film manipulating the crew to get Joan fired. She wasn't just evil, she was also really clever. At one point, someone tried to sabotage her. The actress would frequently wash her renowned eyes during scenes due to the strong lights on film. Someone entered her dressing room and poisoned her eye wash as Mr. Skeffington was being filmed. The perpetrator was never discovered, and director Vincent Sherman reportedly told detectives, if you lined up the cast and crew and asked them, okay, which one of you intended to assassinate Betty Davis, 100 people would raise their hands. Number 14, Peter Sellers. Peter Sellers was one of the most beloved actors in the world. Little did we know he was hard to work and live with, just ask the people who were with him. For sure, they have something to say. It's been said that he terrified Britt Eklund with manic behavior that included drinking, binges, threats, and physical assaults, as well as control over her professional and personal life. His other three wives told similar allegations about him, including him frightening one of them with a firearm. When he divorced a wife, he left her as poor as he could make her, like they were never together at all. On top of that, his children were scared of him, and he threatened and bullied them even waking them up in the middle of the night to ask if he could divorce their mother. When they reached adulthood, he insisted that his children adopt their mother's maiden name, cut them off from any support, and have them removed from his will. Who does that to their children? Working with him was not a sweet treat either. On set, he would show up drunk or high, act out, and destroy or hurl props at anyone who irritated him at the time. Few directors or actors would choose to work with him again. He insisted on firing other actors and stagehands for a number of reasons, the most unusual of which is discussed here. This behavior was condoned and no action was taken to bring in medical professionals because he was a major star and made money for the studios. This kept happening until it became all nonsense. He was advised by director Vittorio De Sica that the color purple symbolizes death. After that, Sellers would become enraged whenever he saw something purple on site and demanded that everybody he spotted wearing purple be fired immediately. Number 13, Milton Berle. Milton Berle's smiles hid a disgusting mind. RuPaul even called him out at the 1993 MTV Video Music Awards because he was known as the thief of bad gags. The two got along terribly both on and off camera, and what was supposed to be a torch passing became unpleasant when RuPaul went off script. RuPaul severed his professional ties with MTV soon after the event. The comic actor and vaudevillian was an icon in the early days of television, with millions tuning in each week to watch what zany pranks Uncle Milty was up to. At the height of his fame, it was said that movie ticket sales fell on the night of his weekly broadcast, and some theaters, restaurants, and other businesses would practically close down to ensure that their customers did not miss the latest episode. Who else would host the top comedy show of all time, if not for him? Ironically, Uncle Milty received a lifelong ban from presenting NBC's Saturday Night Live. When Burrow guest hosted in 1979, he tried to take over the entire program during rehearsals, upsetting his fellow cast members and recycling old comic bits. Lauren Michaels attempted to prevent the show from being rebroadcast, but copies of it emerged in 2003. In this situation, the Hollywood star's jerk conduct had an impact on other people's jobs. Number 12. Marlon Brando Marlon Brando was no joke. He was also known to be a terrible person, though. Marlon was renowned for defying direction, and he refused to remember his lines, preferring to improvise during production, create cue notes to leave somewhere off camera, or use an earpiece. He was also quite systematic in his acting, which alienated many individuals even when the cameras weren't rolling. We guess it was all worth it since Marlon Brando is now regarded as one of the finest actors of all time. The world can't forget this quirky conduct, particularly in his final years. For example, by being late, grotesquely overweight, and failing to read his lines on the set of Apocalypse Now, his scenes had to be refilmed in the shadows, which took longer and was therefore terrible for the film's budget. Then there's the infamous production disaster that was the island of Dr. Moreau, with him still grieving the death of his daughter at the time to add to the list of things that went wrong, 
including Val Kilmer's diva behavior and his feud with Frank Oz. Number 11. Joan Crawford This list wouldn't be completed without the infamous Joan Crawford. Joan would have pushed herself to the front of the queue, raising her hand as high as Lady Liberty. Her backstage altercation with Betty Davis became a lifelong feud. Betty tried everything she could to have Joan fired from the picture, but she was unsuccessful. When Betty was nominated for an Academy Award, but Crawford was not, everything fell apart as expected. Joan hired herself to deliver the Best Director Award and destroyed her own film by openly advocating against her arch nemesis. Anne Bancroft won the Oscar for The Miracle Worker in 1963, and Joan Crawford accepted it on her behalf. There's probably a reason for her behavior, and we're starting to understand that, but there's no reason to have treated her kids badly. Christina Crawford's 1978 tell-all, Mommy Dearest, was her response to a lifetime of abuse. Joan's other two children said they had not been harmed, and numerous of her intimate acquaintances defended her. Joan Crawford's drinking, jealousy, and obsessive cleaning habits were well known in Hollywood. Christina Crawford spent most of her childhood in boarding schools and claims her mother adopted children merely as a public stunt. Crawford wasn't married and illegally adopted her children through back channels. One birth mother even arrived to reclaim her child days after Crawford brought it home. When Joan Crawford died in 1977, she left a $2 million legacy to her two adopted children, who each received $77,500. Christina and her brother Christopher were completely omitted from the will. Number 10. Kirk Douglas Did you expect Kirk Douglas here? Well, in the wake of his death, a new form of solidarity has evolved. For years, rumors swirled about his rude behavior, and some people think it was probably all because of his father. Kirk's father, a rough, illiterate Russian Jewish immigrant, was estranged from his children. He was well aware of his family's limited means and worked a series of low-wage jobs to support himself in college. The animosity he felt in his situation, his father, and society as a whole expressed itself in various ways. Douglas did what Hollywood actors have always done. He invented himself, and that act of will earned him the respect of the consumers. It was a quasi-religious agreement. They would worship him, and he would gradually embody their myths. By 1950, Kirk was a top-tier movie star. He founded his own production business, starred in blockbusters in a variety of genres, and lavished his wealth on two spouses. The actor never realized that being Hollywood's bad boy doesn't mean he should be a real-life bad boy. In short, Kirk Douglas was disliked for his conduct and maltreatment of women. His original autobiography contains several distressing passages that, if published now, would be removed or would have landed him in legal problems. Natalie Wood's sister has claimed that Kirk Douglas hurt the actress in a Chateau Marmont hotel room in 1955. Because the two celebrities are no longer alive, there is no certain way to determine the truth, and it is unlikely that there ever will be. However, the claim has now been made public, and you can interpret it as you see fit. Number 9. John Wayne Up next, let's not forget John Wayne. We're surprised he was still a well-liked actor after all that he's done. John Wayne stated that he believed in white supremacy and would not accept African Americans taking office until they had been educated to a point of responsibility. Although John was well known for his ultra-conservative views, many people are unaware that he identified as both a socialist and a liberal early in his career. John Wayne endorsed Barry Goldwater for president in 1964 after the Arizona senator voted against the Civil Rights Act and he made his most contentious remarks in the May 1971 issue of Playboy. The actor also publicly condemned homosexuality. He thought suddenly last summer was too disgusting even for discussion, and that Midnight Cowboy was perverse. Surprisingly, John befriended Rock Hudson when they co-starred in The Undefeated, and they remained strong friends until John died in 1979. Some film school students continued to walk out of courses when John Wayne films are shown, and Democratic leaders want his name removed from the Orange County Airport. Number 8. Humphrey Bogart When you think of the number one actor from old Hollywood, won't Humphrey Bogart's name be on the top of your list? But, like all people, of course, he had a dark side too. Humphrey was tormented and in a difficult position in his personal life during the making of Casablanca. Ingrid Bergman attempted to interact with the actor by inviting him to her dinners, 
but he often declined, preferring to play chess alone. He even ignored Bergman during the shoot while the cameras were not rolling. He was shorter than Ingrid and had to sit on extra pillows and key sequences, which probably didn't help. His onset behavior during the shooting of Casablanca was impacted by marital problems with his third wife, Mayo Medhat, whom he would eventually leave for a later co-star, 19-year-old Lauren Bacall. He also had a worsening alcohol problem. He battled with the film's director, Michael Curtis. Despite all the production issues, Humphrey and his leading woman, Bergman, managed to create genuine on-screen chemistry, and the picture Casablanca went on to be regarded as one of the best Hollywood films of all time. Number 7. Charlie Chaplin By this point, everyone dislikes Charlie Chaplin, so having him on this list isn't much of a surprise. He was well known in Hollywood as a perfectionist who would lose his cool, become a complete jerk, and dismiss crew members with the drop of a bowler hat. He may have been part of silent films, but they wouldn't stay silent if he didn't like what was happening. Charlie Chaplin was one of the world's most recognizable figures when he was at his peak popularity. However, his reputation deteriorated and became more volatile as he aged. While many people continued to admire him as a comedic genius, others began to harbor anger and hatred towards him. First off, let's talk politics. Charlie wasn't everyone's cup of tea. He was accused of being all buddy-buddy with communists and butted heads with J. Edgar Hoover's FBI. Plus, his movies leaned a little bit too left for some folks. Now, onto his love life, or should we say, drama life. He had more affairs and messy marriages than you can count. He even tied the knot with a couple of 16-year-olds. Talk about scandalous. But wait, there's more. Charlie got slammed with a paternity lawsuit. It was messy, accusing him of breaking some laws and fathering a kid out of wedlock. Let's not forget about taxes. He got in trouble for not paying up to Uncle Sam, so he had to skip town. That didn't win him any popularity points. And to add insult to injury, some of his later movies flopped big time. Like, think a king in New York. Major letdown. Number 6. Bing Crosby Do you remember the actor from those old-timey movies with Bob Hope? Well, turns out there's some serious drama behind that smile. Bing Crosby the beloved crooner wasn't exactly a model dad. His eldest son, Gary Crosby, spilled all the tea in his 1983 bombshell book, Going My Way. Gary didn't hold back. He revealed how Bing wasn't all sunshine and rainbows at home. Nope, he was allegedly dishing out physical and emotional abuse to his kids from his two marriages. Imagine growing up with Bing Crosby as your dad and feeling like you're living in a nightmare instead of a dream. Gary spilled everything from his dad hurting his older brothers to driving his brothers, Lindsay and Dennis, into severe depression. It got so bad that Lindsay and Dennis tragically took their own lives in 1989 and 1991. Bing Crosby might have been America's sweetheart on the big screen, but behind closed doors, it was a whole different story. So much for those happy-go-lucky movies. Bing Crosby and his road movie buddy Bob Hope weren't exactly besties. Turns out, they were more like frenemies, even though they turned out seven road movies together, Bob Hope spilled the beans to a friend, saying he straight up didn't like Bing. In fact, there were times when he downright detested him. Number 5. Lucille Ball Lucille Ball might have changed the TV game forever with her sitcom, but behind the scenes, things were a bit more complicated than they seemed. Lucy was a trailblazer, no doubt. She pushed the boundaries of what could be shown on television and totally revamped the modern sitcom scene. But here's the kicker, she wasn't exactly a walk in the park to work with. According to Tony Randall, she was like the ultimate boss lady, calling the shots and not holding back on the tough love. And in 1979, Richard Burton dropped a bombshell calling Lucy a monster of staggering harmlessness and monumental lack of humor. Talk about a harsh review. He even joked that if he hadn't had a few too many drinks, he might have done something drastic. So yeah, while Lucy was slaying it on screen, behind the scenes, it seems she had a bit of a reputation. Who knew, right? Hollywood's got its fair share of surprises. Number 4. Alec Guinness Hold on to your lightsabers, folks, because it turns out Obi-Wan Kenobi might have had a dark side off-screen. Spoiler alert, he hated his role. Alec Guinness, the legendary actor behind the original Obi-Wan Kenobi, was one of Britain's finest screen icons. Suave, sophisticated, he embodied the quintessential Englishman, or so we thought. 
with Academy Award under his belt, multiple nominations, and a knighthood from Queen Elizabeth II, he expected to be remembered other than his role in Star Wars. Working alongside legendary directors like David Lean and Alexandra McKendrick, Guinness carved out a name for himself as a true thespian, delivering unforgettable performances that resonated with audiences worldwide. His contributions to film are immeasurable, earning him a place among the greats of his era. But for many, he will forever be remembered as Obi-Wan Kenobi from the original Star Wars trilogy. While the role brought him fame and financial success, it also cast a shadow over his illustrious career. Despite his dedication to the craft and pursuit of what he deemed higher art, he found himself eclipsed by the iconic status of his space wizard character. Behind the scenes, Alec was a whole different story. He was like a bizarre control freak, pulling strings left and right. He wouldn't even let people decide what they wanted to eat at meals. It just gets weirder from here. His home life was like a drama straight out of the movie. Growing up with a rough family background, Alec carried some serious baggage. He'd belittle his wife, Marula, and had this weird reflexive misogyny thing going on, like he'd see her as dumb just because. Even though he tried to keep his jerkish tendencies under wraps, they'd still leak out. Number 3. Mickey Rooney Mickey Rooney was allegedly unkind and spoke poorly of many people he worked with all throughout his career. Mickey was married eight times and boasted about having numerous extramarital romances in his autobiography, Life is Too Short. MGM studio chief Louis B. Mayer chastised Rooney in 1938 for having a passionate affair with Norma Shearer, which caused complications during the production of Marie Antoinette. The actor also alleges that he went to his first bordello with his instructor Milton Berle and saw Tallulah Bankhead have a lesbian experience. The two might be jerks in Hollywood together. As if that wasn't enough, Mickey revealed his close friend Judy Garland's brief affair with a woman and described his first wife Ava Gardner's private parts in graphic detail. Craig Bennett, a Hollywood journalist, makes even more alarming charges in his 2019 book, True Confessions of a Shameless Gossip. He describes the actor as abrasive, nasty, curt, and rude, and claims that Mickey's extensive list of conquests included one with 14-year-old Elizabeth Taylor on the set of National Velvet when he was 24. The author also alleges Mickey almost wore out the casting couch, auditioning young actresses for the jobs that didn't exist. If it's any consolation, Many of the actor's statements are commonly thought to be overstated or even incorrect. Number 2. Rita Hayworth Rita Hayworth, the silver screen siren, had a life full of shadows behind her dazzling smile. Unlike some of her Hollywood counterparts, she was actually quite shy, keeping her turbulent personal life hidden from the spotlight. But behind closed doors, things were far from glamorous. She battled alcoholism and found herself in complicated relationships, whether with film directors or royalty. Her marriages often ended in heated arguments and dragged out legal battles, with one blending into the next as she struggled to untangle herself from the past. The actress struggled with parenting massively. Rita Hayworth's beauty and charm dazzled audiences, but her personal life was marked by hardships, which ultimately affected her role as a parent to her two daughters. Raised in difficult circumstances, Rita's own troubled relationships and past impacted her ability to provide stable parenting. In a particularly distressing incident, she left her daughters in the care of a babysitter and went off on a vacation, leaving them behind. The situation took a serious turn when a neighbor reported seeing her daughters playing in unsanitary conditions, resulting in Rita being charged with child neglect. The stress and alcohol took a toll on her, prematurely aging her outward appearance. Tragically, early onset Alzheimer's disease robbed her of her memories in her later years. By her 50s, she struggled to remember lines and spent her days in a New York apartment, her once vibrant memory fading as her finances dwindled. Number 1. George Reeves Before the internet swooped in to claim the superhero throne, George Reeves was rocking the red cape as Superman on TV way back in the 1950s. Now, Superman might be invincible against kryptonite, but George's downfall came in the form of hot lead. He caught a bullet. And while that doesn't automatically make you a bad boy, the circumstances sure make you raise an eyebrow. Just before his tragic end, he left his longtime mistress, Tony Mannix, who happened to be married to MGM big shot Eddie Mannix. He then got together with Leonore Lemon, a notorious wild child known for her, um, volatile antics, 
were talking shooting guns around the house for kicks. Eddie Mannix wasn't just any studio exec. He was MGM's fixer, the guy who made problems disappear. Rumor has it he didn't mind if you betted his wife, as long as you didn't make her angry. George Reeves' death was officially ruled as self-inflicted, but the investigation? Let's just say it was shrouded in mystery. Lemon waltzed into the crime scene, the autopsy was botched, and the witnesses? Not the most reliable bunch. With Eddie, Tony, Leonor, and their shady associates in the mix, it's no wonder there were more suspects than you could shake a stick at. And there you have it, 20 more of the most evil actors in Hollywood history. We've uncovered the twisted secrets lurking behind the glitz and glamour, but the story doesn't end here. Hollywood's history is full of intrigue and mystery, and there's always more to uncover. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, and don't forget to share your favorite moments in the comments below. For more exciting videos, subscribe to Vintage TV and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching.